Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, I'm gonna make a video today and it's a little bit different from others that I've made in the past. We're not gonna talk nutrition or training or bodybuilding at all. I thought I wanna touch on mental health. Now, someone had mentioned that it may be a good idea to make this video. And the more I thought about it, I thought to myself, yeah, that does sound like a good idea. Um, I think the idea for the video was spurred by, you know, what's been going on in the world, the whole coronavirus thing. A lot of people have been home. Uh, maybe thrown off their regular schedule. Uh, things are different. A lot of people, I think, are feeling it mentally. Um, but although that may have spurred the video, I think it's uh, it's something that's always relative. It's always applicable and always important. And not a lot of people talk about it. So this is about mental health. And right from the start, let me say I'm not a mental health expert. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a doctor of any kind. <laughs> um, I'm just the guy who likes to bodybuild. But I do have some strategies that I've employed over the years, things that have helped me immensely to stay on track, stay focused, and stay productive. Because the reality is there's a lot of things that go on in life that you cannot control, things going on in the world. I think it's important to focus on the things that you can control. And I guess, you know, when I try to kind of organize all this in my head, I kind of came up with almost like divvying it up three ways. There's kind of like things we can do in our environment, things that we can do physically, and things that I guess take place purely inside our head. Uh, that if we practice them, we could probably find ourselves just uh, staying on track better, focusing better, and hopefully being happier, right? <laughs> so let's talk first about our environment because before we even get to doing something physically or going through something in our minds i think what's going on around us what we allow what um e even what our physical setting looks like it's very important to kind of hammer things hammer that out first for example um when I, when I was a lot younger, you know, my Greg grew up, my parents were divorced. Um, there was a lot of back and forth between my parents. Uh, you know, there were times when things were hard. Things uh, were kind of maybe screwed up in my mind. And I would often look to eating. I would overeat. I was a big kid. And I think I leaned on food a lot. But one thing I did learn early on that I think was a really positive uh, thing was... I would get up every morning and the first thing I would do is make my bed. And I think seeing my bed made, made my environment just look more orderly and I felt in control of something. And for me to be neat and to be organized and things like that, it allowed me to then move forward and think about other things. And maybe not everybody works this way, but you know, I think there's just some good habits we can all employ that will help us uh, you know you get up you make your bed you keep everything organized you know literally around you uh, things aren't a mess there's not stuff all over the floor things are put away everything is organized and I think once we have organization in our physical environment things are we can make order make sense out of that it allows us at least me personally to move forward and make sense and create order in other parts of my life. When I'm surrounded by what looks like chaos and disorder, it's very hard for me to organize myself mentally. So, like I said, just getting up every morning, making my bed, it costs nothing, but something like that would help me a lot. And right away, you're starting the day with something that produces order, something, um, it's a positive thing. And I think the more things you can do throughout the day that are positive, the better you can feel uh, just about your life in general. So in order, you know, in line with that, I think it's important to get rid of distractions. A lot of us, you know, around our homes, we have unfinished tasks. Things maybe they were started, not completed. Um, things left out. Get all that shit taken care of. Finish up loose ends. Put things away. Uh, you know, finish up old projects. Get all that stuff squared away so that you can move forward. Because I don't know about you guys, but every time I see something, maybe that was started, not finished, something that's in a place that it shouldn't be. It just kind of, I look at it and I go, Ugh. and it, it, it irks me. It takes a little bit out of me every time I see it and it weighs on you. So I think the more things you can do, finish them up, put them away, get, get it done. 
Uh, if it's something that's been sitting there, you don't know what you're going to do with it, Either give it to somebody, throw it in the garbage, sell it, whatever it is, but, but take care of it. Because there's, we all have those things. They've just been sitting there um, unaddressed. Finish them up. Uh, in line with your environment, I think it's important to consider who it is you surround yourself with. Are you surrounding your, you know, or, or, okay, in times of quarantine, maybe who you talk with on the phone. Maybe your habits on social media. Are you in surrounding yourself with people who you know maybe you aspire to be like i think it's important just like when you go into a gym one of the worst things that you can be is the the biggest strongest guy in that gym <laughs> um you want to be around people who are better than you people who you know maybe they are bigger and stronger maybe they're more successful uh, maybe you just, you like the way that person handles themselves and say, geez, that's a great person. They've got certain things that I'd like to take note of. I want to be like that person. That's good. Converse with those people to keep people around you. Maybe there's some people that are dead weight. Um, you know, they weigh on your life. They're a negative force in your life. Get rid of them. Uh, it, it's important to not only be around, but to speak with and, and even follow, you know, people that are, I guess for lack of a better word, good. <laughs> so in terms of your environment, right, does your physical environment, uh, you know, is it tidy? Is it organized? Is it clean? Have you uh, tied up loose ends? And then there's, you know, maybe the people that are around you, uh, you know, who you converse with, who you hang out with. It's all important things, I think, to consider. After we get our environment organized, I think it's important to think about what we do physically. Um, now, chances are you guys are watching this, you're probably into working out, and that's great. Because I think one of the most important things for everyone uh, is being physical. You know, if you look at kids, kids run around, they play, they're nonstop. I think that's something that's very innate, and I think as we get older, for a lot of people, that's lost. Uh, so I think it's, always imp it's important to always be doing something, literally, physically. Uh, you're cleaning something, you're fixing something, you're working out. Uh, I think it's important to go to bed each night tired, uh, almost kind of, you know, earning your rest. And when you get in bed at night and you're just, you're tired and you say, oh man, it feels so good to lay here. If you're someone who lays around all day, you're not physical, you're not productive, getting in bed doesn't have that same feeling. A lot of times people like that have trouble sleeping. Uh, they don't fall right to sleep. As soon as my head hits the pillow at night, I'm out. I'm, I'm done. Um, it's because I'm busy all day. Even if I'm not in the gym working out, I'm doing something. Um, I'll go out and I'll, uh, you know, and this is another thing I want to say. This is, a, I guess, maybe another part of being physical that I want to uh, talk about. It's being productive in general, right? Do something. doesn't matter what it is. I think one of the most satisfying things about bodybuilding is seeing change occur, right? Creating a finished product. You start off someplace and you start dieting. You start doing cardio. You start training harder and you see your body transform. That's incredibly gratifying, but you, there's other ways to do that in other parts of your life too. You know, you can go out, cut your grass, wash your car, uh, do some landscaping, anything, learn a hobby, take up sewing. There's so many things you can do uh, to just to create and to kind of receive that satisfaction over and over and over. Uh, pretty much you can make everything you do a form of therapy. <laughs> uh, a lot of times I'll jokingly say that about myself, right? I mean, I'm into, uh, I have a few older John Deere lawn tractors. Uh, I, re I restored them. I like metalworking. I like sewing. I like bodybuilding, gardening. All of it for me is a form of creation and really ultimately a form of therapy because I'm able to uh, take a subject, research it, learn about it, and then practice it, you know, put it into motion, create a product. And it, it, for me, it's, it's, it's extremely interesting and extremely satisfying. So there's no limit to the number of things that you can do physically to receive the same kind of satisfaction that you do from bodybuilding. I think another important thing to do physically is to be prepared, to set yourself up, you know, whether it's food preparation, right? All of you watching this, most of you, I'm sure you've all food prepped, right? 
that's a form of preparation that helps lend a lot of sanity to your life. Because if you eat, you're someone who eats five or six times a day, and every time it's time to eat, you have to think about what it is you're going to eat next, that can be extremely, it's not only stressful, but it's inefficient. It's just bad. Um, you need to be prepared. Because ultimately, having a schedule, having a routine uh, where you can get up every day, you know what you're going to do, you have a plan of attack, then you go at it, and you, you, know, you get done as much as you can, that is, at least for me, a part of mental health. Because if I have a day where, you know, we, we all have these days, nothing is going right. Everything is turning to shit. Nothing is happen happening with any amount of speed or efficiency or effectiveness. And the end of the day comes, you go, I was busy all day and I didn't get a damn thing done. And it's the worst feeling. So the more of a system you can have down, the more prepared you can be, the more efficient you can then be, the more you can get done, and chances are, come the end of that day, you will feel better about your day. Um, so be prepared, be organized, whether it's preparing your food, whether it's making a list, just, just be prepared. I don't think I have to tell a lot of you guys watching this, but eat well, right? We all know that if you eat lousy consistently, it has a big effect, not only on you physically, but mentally. You know, sticking to unprocessed foods, uh, you know, get your vitamins and minerals in, have a, have a micronutrient dense diet. Um, that's all important. And, and the better you eat and the more, you know, you're not just fueling your body, but you're fueling your brain. And there are a lot of brain foods, you know, look, looking to things like um, healthy fats, you know, choline that's found in egg yolks. There's a lot of things that are good brain foods that should um, be present in your diet. So obviously, you know, never neglect that. But and I'm sure all you guys know this, but you could also consider brushing up on that. There are certain things that are brain foods. All right, now that we've discussed both environment and you know a physical approach to mental health, let's talk about, I guess, things that I would consider to be more purely mental. Um, one of the things that I find to be most helpful, uh, and although this is technically a physical act, it, it enables me to organize things mentally, is to make lists. Um, a lot of times before I go to bed each night, I will sit down uh, at my desk and, you know, look forward to the next day and say, okay, what do I have to get done tomorrow? Um, because, you know, we all have a head filled with things that have to get done. I know this has to get done, this got to get done, this got to get done. Um, but to actually sit down and organize it both physically and mentally and say, okay, what order does it make sense to do this in? Uh, what's, you know... Can I, how much can I feasibly put on my plate for tomorrow? Uh, so make a list and organize it, again, physically and mentally, so that when you wake up, there's no thinking, okay, what am I gonna do today? No, it's boom, look at the list and get to work. And you already know the order in which you're gonna do it. Um, and speaking of getting up, get up early. Um, again, a physical act in itself, but getting up early before other people, you know, one of the most satisfying things is, you know, come, you know, maybe nine or 10 AM, you've been up for a while and you've already said, geez, I've already got this, 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 and this done. You feel like you've conquered the world by nine or 10 AM. That's awesome. Uh, cause you know, in your head, say, geez, I've got all this stuff done. A lot of people, they're just getting up. They're just getting going. They probably haven't gotten anything done yet. So, you know, it's almost like you get up, you get out and you're on the road and no one else is on the road. There's a certain feeling that comes along with that mentally. You say, I'm doing what other people aren't doing. I'm going above and beyond. And this is essentially, this is a good thing. I'm gonna get ahead of everyone and um, I'm gonna get ahead for myself today. So get up early, get to work and conquer the world by 9 or 10 a.m. I try to do that every day. Um, you know, it's almost like a competition with myself. And the more that I get done by an early time, the better I feel. Got to be, cons and it, you know, this brings me to my next one, you've got to be consistent. It doesn't do you any good to do this one day and then, you know, screw off for three days. You've got to do this every day. Just like training, right? One good day of nutrition or one good day of new training means nothing. 
you have to do this day in and day out. And only then um, can you not only accomplish things, but get yourself in a different frame of mind mentally. Because just, I would look at it like riding a bike, right? The harder you pedal consistently, the more momentum you build. And that's especially important when something big is coming up. You have a big task ahead, um, just like there's a big hill coming up. If you don't pedal like hell consistently and gain a significant amount of momentum, there's only so hard you're gonna be able to pedal once you hit it, you can't make up for it. So the best thing to do is pedal like hell before that, be consistent every day, and then when big tasks come up, you're gonna just steamroll them. Focus. <laughs> this sounds, you know, like this goes without saying, and it sounds cliche, but you have to focus. And when I say focus, um, you have to focus intently and ask yourself over and over again, okay, remind yourself of what your goal or your goals are and say, okay, I'm doing this right now. Is this bringing me any closer to my to accomplishing my goal or my goals? And obviously not every single thing you do in your life is going to be in accordance with, with one singular focus. There's going to be multiple different things you have going on. But any given moment, what you want to make sure you're doing is not setting yourself back or working against you accomplishing your goals. Um, so continue to ask yourself, okay, I'm doing this right now. Does this make sense? Or am I fighting myself? So stay focused um, don't, and don't lose sight of the goal. I touched on it a little bit earlier, but you need to have, I think, have a routine. Because mentally, I think as human beings, we are creatures of habit, which can work against you. But I think we need a certain amount of habitual action and routine to not go crazy. <laughs> if you wake up every day and, you know, one day you wake up at 8 a.m., the other day you wake up at 5.30 a.m., the other day you sleep till noon, you've, you've got no routine, you've got no consistent plan of attack. Um, I think it's one of the worst things you could do. So I think that although, you know, falling into habits can be a bad thing, falling into good habits can be a great thing. So just because something is a habit or, you know, being human beings, it, it, uh, we are creatures of, of habit, that's not necessarily a bad thing if they are good habits. I think it's important to have things to look forward to. You know, my daughter, who's eight, she's gonna be nine in a few months, um, she's been talking about her birthday for the last three months. And it's still three months to her birthday. So for six months, she's been talking about her birthday, what kind of cake she's going to have, who she wants there. She's already envisioning something. Um, this is a great thing. And I think we all did this as kids. And as we get older, maybe we lose it. And it's important to have things that you look forward to. It doesn't have to be a birthday. It doesn't have to be a vacation. It doesn't have to be anything big. It could be something small. It could be something that costs nothing. Um, Hell, I don't know, when, when it's ready for, when springtime is almost here, I look forward to fertilizing my lawn, all right? And I'm, I'm deciding what I'm gonna put down on it. I'm figuring out how many pounds of nitrogen it's gonna be, um, you know, how much lime I'm gonna put down. Now, this might sound cheesy to you, okay? But I give myself all these little things to look forward to, and they're not big ticket things. They're not things that, you know, are gonna break the bank. They're not things that are extravagant. They're just little things in my life that, um, you know, it gives me something to think about, something to focus on, something to look forward to. If you've got nothing to look forward to, that sucks. So you should, I think, set up all these little things in your mind uh, that you have to take an interest in things. And once you take an interest in things and you can, you know, spend your time learning about them and getting excited, getting excited about them, uh, the more things you'll have to look forward to. So have things to look forward to. Um, and like I just said, take an interest. There's so many things in life. Um, when people tell me I'm bored, I'm like, how the hell could you be bored? There's no limit to what you can be doing or learning about or putting into action. Uh, at least for me, there's so many things that excite me or that I think are cool. Um, just do something. You know, you have, there's all this information right at our fingertips. YouTube, YouTube is great. I had to replace uh, a window motor in my truck not long ago. 
Okay, I don't know how to do that. It's on YouTube. <laughs> so rather than go spend X amount, you know, I was able to spend 60 bucks on the part and put it in myself. And in the process, it was me doing something and I was able to look back at it after and go, hell yeah, I did that. You know, it didn't cost me, I saved, I saved money and I felt good about myself for doing it. So, I mean, these are just little stupid things, okay? But they can add a lot of satisfaction to your life. And like I said, all the information is at your fingertips. Between Google, YouTube, there's online forums, people talking about stuff. There's so much information there that anything you want to attack, it's not like 20 or 30 years ago where, what'd you have? You had Encyclopedia Britannica. And <laughs> <laughs> if you needed to know something, you had to go find that person to teach you how to do it. It's not like that anymore. You have so much freedom at your fingertips. Um, there's no limit to what you can do. So I think ultimately, again, you have to keep in mind that there's a lot of things in life that you cannot control, but there's so much you know, within yourself and your personal space, so many things that you can control. And... Um, You've got to find sanity and find empowerment, really, in that. Uh, because the more things you do for yourself, the more things that you learn, the more things that uh, you can do on your own, it's extremely empowering. Uh, it's a great feeling. You'll probably save yourself money. Um, and it's, it's, I think it's just all good for your brain. So get excited about things. Look forward to things. Take an interest in things. Gain control over your personal space. Um, and I think the more you do these things, the more you'll find yourself gaining control over your mental processes, your thoughts, and, and um, you'll just feel good about things. And that's, that's good. <laughs> so, I mean, I hope this didn't sound cheesy. I hope you guys like this. I hope you find maybe some of it helpful. Again, I'm no expert. I'm just a guy who likes bodybuilding, but there's a few things that I found helpful. So I hope they help you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys again soon.